No individual motorcades, but coaches to ferry even the world's princes and presidents, ensuring arrivals ran like clockwork. The emperor and empress of Japan, for whom funeral appearances are rare because of their Shinto faith, shared a bus with the king and queen of Bhutan. A photo opportunity for Kenya's president smiling widely at the back of the picture, but after intensive negotiations, there were only a handful of exceptions to the travel arrangements. America's president, Joe Biden, arrived in his Cadillac dubbed the Beast for security reasons. And China's vice president also came by car, an indication of the diplomatic tightrope walked by the Foreign Office. Has there ever been a world event where such thought must have gone into the seating arrangements of so many foreign dignitaries and royal families coming to pay their respects to the Queen? Canada's Justin Trudeau first met the Queen as a child when his father was Prime Minister. Joe Biden, one of 14 US presidents during the Queen's reign, described her as a stateswoman of unmatched dignity. But in the service, the special place the Queen held for the Commonwealth was clear, with the first lesson read by Baroness Scotland. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who gave birth while in office, said the Queen once advised her on juggling roles, you just have to get on with it. It is those personal anecdotes those international relationships which fostered such admiration for the Queen. Leaving Westminster Abbey, the rare sight of royalty waiting for a bus and forming a queue. But a sign of the global reverence commanded by Queen Elizabeth II amongst the world leaders who came together to lay her to rest. Lisa Holland, Sky News.